What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for checking in on another video. So I recently did a video on the things that I hate about my F3335i as well as some things that I don't like about BMW in general. So today's video is going to be a follow up to that. I'm actually going to talk about the things that I love about my F30. Let's get to it. Right off the bat here, I just want to say that if you guys are looking to purchase one of these cars, there are some really, really great things about this. And especially in the used market, you can actually pick one of these up easily for 20 grand or, or something around that range. It just kind of depends on the year and mileage that you want to stay at, but you get a ton of car for the money. So for those of you that don't already know, this is my 2014 BMW F30 335i. I did a video recently on my first year of ownership, so definitely go check that video out as well. But this car has been very, very good to me, and this car has actually been out for quite a while. So um, at this point, the motor's been perfected. You know, this is the N55, so it did come in the previous E90 models as well as the F series as well. So this motor has been, been out for a long time, and so there's a lot of aftermarket support here and a lot of really great things about this car. So number one on my list is actually going to be styling because this car is 2014, so it's about six years old now but it does look like it's still current. In my opinion, BMW does a really good job of making their cars age really well. So even now, up to 2020, we've got a lot of guys that are still interested in the E46 M3 and older BMW models that actually still look like current day cars. And that's what I really like about this car. It's super sleek looking, it's got really nice body lines, super nice and uh, very aggressive looking, especially mine, if you've got an M Sport model. Um, again, I do have some aftermarket parts on here, so we'll get into that in a second, but styling on this car, just really, really great. And for it not being an actual M car, I couldn't have asked for a better model. I also think that BMW does a really good job on interior and exterior color combos. So this is a mineral gray metallic over coral red interior on the inside, and I absolutely love this color. Um, it's super subtle, perfect for a daily. It's not too loud for me. Um, you know, I'm in my early 30s now, so I kind of wanted a color that was a little bit more sophisticated, I guess. Um, and that's kind of also why I don't like really like vinyl wraps and that kind of stuff because it's a little bit too loud for my taste. But this is a super classy color. It hides dirt really well, especially for being a daily driver. And I really love the red interior. And that's one thing that I wish I had on my E92 M3 was red interior, but uh, I'll say settled for the black and you know, I'm still not disappointed with that either. So this is a perfect color combination for my styling at least, but BMW does have some really great colors out there and plenty of options for you guys to choose from. The next thing on my list that I want to discuss is performance. So like I said earlier, this motor has been out for quite a while now. So this is the N55, which is a three liter single turbo twin scroll inline six and it makes 300 horsepower. This one um, actually does have a little bit more because it does have an M Performance power kit on it right here. So it does come with a little bit more power than a standard 335. This is more like in the 330, 335 range. This is a, a kit from BMW that was installed by BMW under warranty and all that. So it's pretty, pretty decently fast. Um, it's also got quite a bit of torque. So for a daily driver car, this is plenty of power, but obviously, I'm into modifying and, and things like that. And so I've got more, more coming for this car. So you have to stay tuned for what's coming soon, but we are going to be cranking up the horsepower on this thing actually. So stay tuned for that. The next item on my list are creature comforts. So one of the biggest things about this car that I love as well as my M3 is the fact that this thing has comfort access. And if you guys don't know what comfort access is, it's a game changer in my opinion. So if you actually walk up to the car, you've got your key fob in your pocket, you don't have to take this out and unlock the car. There's actually these little ridges here on the door, both driver's side and passenger fronts. And all you need to do in order to lock, unlock everything is to walk up to it, put your thumb on it, pull the handle, everything unlocks and opens up. One of the other things that I think is really cool is actually that this car, I can actually wave my foot underneath the trunk and it'll actually pop open for me. It's hit or miss on whether or not that happens, but if for some reason I've got my hands full of groceries or whatever the case may be, I can easily walk up to the car and kind of wave my foot underneath it and the trunk should open theoretically. So obviously the other creature comforts are in the inside of the car. A lot of them are pretty standard things nowadays. Obviously it's got, you know, heated seats here, both driver and passenger seats. It does have dual climate control and uh, a couple other little things here. So it does have, you know, automatic lights. I can just leave it on auto here. So it does have light sensors. It also has rain sensors. Um, you know, I can hit this button here and it'll turn the wipers on automatic. So that way when it senses rain, it'll automatically, you know, swipe for me. So it does have all of these nice creature comforts inside as well. Additionally, 
It does have power windows, power seats, power mirrors, so plenty of adjustability here, as you can see on the seats, as well as memory settings. So if I wanted to, you know, let my girlfriend drive the car, she can actually take her own key and it would just program automatically to one of these other settings that we have here, one and two, and uh, she doesn't have to screw with anything that much. My specific F30 also did come with a Harman Kardon sound system, and I believe there's 14 or 15 speakers in here, and then as well as two subwoofers underneath the driver and passenger seats. I also did an install video on some Bob Sound underseat ghost subwoofers, so definitely go check that video out as well. Um, but nothing was actually wrong with, with the Harman Kardon um, subwoofers that were in here previously, and it actually sounds pretty good. So uh, super happy with the way this sounds. And for a daily driven car, like I couldn't ask for a better system. Another pretty standard feature here in BMWs nowadays, and actually a lot of cars, is parking distance control sensors. So I can hit that button, it'll pull up my sensors. The newer models actually have cameras, you know, 360 cameras, but mine just has the sensors in the front and rear bumpers. So, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in drive, and automatically it's telling me that I'm too close. You know, if we get closer and closer, it'll yell at me even more, it gets red, and then additionally, putting it in reverse, we do have a rear backup camera as well. Also, when the car is in reverse, you'll see the passenger mirror over here. It will automatically tilt down, back and drive, and it goes back up. So, kind of nice little features to have. Another creature comfort that I like about this car is the fact that the windows are auto up and down, and that's for all four windows. So it's kind of a nice thing to have just because I don't have to sit here and hold them up and down. I could just hit it once and it'll do its thing. My car also did come with a home link mirror here. So I was ab actually able to program this to open my garage door. So what I can do is actually hold this down. The garage door will open. I actually have three here that I can add additional garages to or whatever else. So I've actually seen guys with, you know, valve exhausts that were able to program it to one of these buttons as well. So multi-purpose buttons, and that's kind of a nice thing to have. And the mirror is also auto dimming. So at nighttime, it will get dimmer as, you know, bright lights come up behind you and things like that. So nice little features to have. Number four on my list is practicality. So this is my daily driven car, and so I did want it to be a four-door. Um, obviously, I am a fan of coupes. My M3 is a coupe, but for daily duties, this car is perfect actually in my current lifestyle, and I don't have any kids yet, so I can imagine that it's a little bit harder to have kids with this car because the back seat is a little bit tight in the footroom area, but for my current lifestyle and, and my current duties, I think this is perfect for me. The car's not too big, it gets decent mileage, it's got plenty of space in the front, plenty of headroom, and you know, I've got some family members that are over six feet tall easily, six four, that sort of thing, and they've got plenty of, of headroom above. Uh, again, the only thing that I would really say is kind of a little bit tight back here would be the feet room, but even then you can see my my chair is in my driver's position and there's still enough room for someone to get back there. So it's not the biggest in the back seats, but um, for what I need it to do, it's perfect. So as you can see, I fit in here perfectly fine. And I've got a decent amount of leg room here. Obviously my knees are touching a little bit. So if you're over six feet tall, you might have a little bit of an issue here, but um, like I said, it's pretty decent. And for, you know, small kids, I think this is more than sufficient. Um, also, you can hook on some little, you know, car seats and things like that with these down here. And uh, yeah, so plenty of space. And for this being a three series, the trunk is actually pretty large as well. So it's got everything that I need in here, plenty of space. I've never had an issue where I wasn't able to, you know, fit something unless it was something really, really gigantic. But the great thing about this one is the fact that these rear seats fold. So. That's another, I think, an option because I know that there are some cars that don't have that ability. So, as you can see, I can plop my seats down, that sort of thing. And uh, it does have a cargo net in here. Obviously, there's no spare tire because BMW doesn't put those in here, but also has a nice little, little tray here for me to put stuff as well as over here, and it really just gets the job done. So we finally come to number five on my list, which is the fun one, tunability and aftermarket support. So again, this car has been out for a while. It is turbocharged, so there are a lot of options in terms of making 
not only you know exterior mods but also power adders and things like that so this car has already had a few changes as you can see um, if you guys don't know what those changes are i've got videos on pretty much everything that i've done to this car so far so there are a lot of exterior things and we are going to be getting into some engine mods as well um, but there's just so many options out there for this car and there's so many aftermarket companies that are doing things with this platform and you know even though it is an older car it's still very very popular and people love this thing so um, easy to make good horsepower numbers and make it a fun car to drive, especially on a daily basis. So look forward to more videos to come on, you know, aftermarket parts for this car, specifically with performance. I've got a couple of those coming soon. All right guys, so that just about covers all the things that I think are fantastic with this car. I'm sure it can come up with more, but those are the main highlights. So if you guys are looking to purchase one of these and you're kind of on the fence, um, I actually was torn between this and going to an Infiniti Q50S. I came from an Infiniti a while back and I always loved mine and so it was kind of a toss up between this and the Infiniti. I'm, I'm actually glad that I went with the BMW. It's just a nicer car overall and uh, it does hold value a little bit better. So I'm really happy with my purchase here. So if you guys are looking to purchase one of these, it's pretty reliable. I haven't really had any issues at all. Definitely go check out my one year of ownership video uh, for things like that. If you have any concerns about any maintenance type items, that sort of thing. But uh, the channel here is good for, you know, not only aftermarket stuff, but also some DIY maintenance items. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys. If you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns about anything that I've talked about today, please let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, we will see you guys on the next video. Take care. Stay tuned for more. I've got lots more for this car. So stay tuned. We'll see you then. Thank you.